like it's a snow. It's going to be great spending Christmas up here, isn't it? Yes, you know, we almost always had a white Christmas back east when I was a little girl. Hmm. He's in a hurry. Evidently. I just wanted to warn you to take it easy, sir. We've had several slides, and the road's pretty bad up ahead. All right, thanks. Never mind, Mother. It's only that man. Yes, but we mustn't be rude, even to men, darling. Unnecessarily rude. No harm done. Thanks. Thanks for your warning, too. There's no such thing as a dangerous road. If you know how to drive, Stephen Blake. If you'll just register, sir. Uh, Fred, what rooms are we holding for Mr. and Mrs. Blake? There is no Mrs. Blake. I'm Mrs. Edith Farnham. I have reservations for myself, my daughter, and my maid. I beg your pardon, but as you came in together, I naturally thought... You should have seen the way that fell. Yeah, perhaps I should. May I help you, sir? Oh, look! The mirror broke. That means seven years' bad luck. <laughs> Thanks. Brenda. Yes, Mother. Hey, Billy, show Mrs. Farnham to Suite 23. Come, boys, lend a hand. Oh, this is very pleasant. You can put those bags in the other room. Yes, ma'am. Mm, what a terrible smell of paint. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I'll open this window and I'm sure it'll air out soon. All right. Shall I light the fire for you? Yes, please, but leave the window open. It's terrible if you really. Yes, ma'am. Well, this isn't quite so pungent. Anything else, ma'am? No, thank you. That's all. Give this to the other boy, would you please? Thank you. What is it, dear? Mother, I knocked that suitcase off. I know it. But I'm glad you told me. I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been anybody else but that old cross patch. Or any other male, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. So am I. Mostly because I'm quite sure I'm to blame. Come here, darling. Brenda, you and I have had a tough time. But just because we've had one unfortunate experience, I don't want you to be prejudiced against men all your life. But you are. You see, it is my fault. Nothing's your fault. You're the most wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, am I going to get that pair of skates for Christmas, do you think? If you don't, I suppose I'm not so wonderful. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but, but am I? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, you are the most <laughs> wonderful person in the whole world. I'm going to be the sickest in a minute. That odor of paint's getting stronger every second. Funny, I can't smell it at all. <laughs> Darling, you are catching cold. Ellen. Yes, ma'am. We must get Brenda to bed immediately. Oh, Mother. Well, wouldn't you rather go to bed now than risk being sick on Christmas Day? That would be terrible. Well, run along to Ellen. I'm going downstairs for a minute. Yes, paint. Fresh paint. Well, you see, 
Oh, here's the manager now, Mrs. Well, I tell you, it's positively sick. I know it, Mr. Blake, and I'm very, very sorry. Oh, but you must have one room in the hotel that wasn't painted yesterday. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid not. I'm afraid they're all about the same. Are, are you oh. bothered by the paint, too, Mrs. Farnham? Me? Yes. Oh, no, I find it rather refreshing. Yeah. Mr. Coffee, and Mr. Truckee. Fred, the phone. Hello? Yes? Oh, good heavens, you can't mean it. But that's impossible. What is it, Fred? And only two cars got through before it happened? What is it? Well, something's got to be done, man, right away. Well, keep us informed, won't you? Well? A bad snow slide several miles down. What? They say the road is absolutely impassable. Fred. They doubt if it can be cleared away before tomorrow. Oh. Or the next day. Oh, uh, this is a catastrophe. How can we have a gala opening without people? A thing like this never happened to my hotel at Palm Beach. Say, so look here, do you mean to say that we... Uh, that there won't be any other guests in this barn? I'm afraid so, sir. <laughs> well, only until tomorrow, Mr. Blake. And you weren't expecting your son today anyway, were you? No, but I don't relish the idea of being a hermit. Uh, there's no danger of starvation, is there? I mean, we won't have to draw lots to see who's to be eaten first, oh. will we? <laughs> Mrs. Farnham, don't let it upset you, please. We'll have the gala opening just the same. Oh, we'll see that you enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Fred, phone Miss Peabody and Mr. Snurley. Tell them to report at the desk at once. Get me body and serve it. Yes, sir. Twenty-five waiters. Four chefs. A ten-piece jazz band and two guests. Good morning. Huh? Oh, good morning. Snurl is the name, Mr. Blake. If I may take the liberty of introducing myself. Oh. How are you? Oh, so it was a mistake about only two cars getting through. Oh, I'm not a guest, Mr. Blake. My official title is sports director, but I hope you won't let that stand between us. I like to think of myself as just one of the gang. Uh -huh. Yeah, what'd you say your name was? Snurley. Ralph P. Snurley. It's rather an odd name, but... Uh... Oh, that's all right. I want to see a man named Snipe. Huh? Oh. <laughs> oh, excuse oh, me. Oh, absolutely. What are those, ski boots? Oh, yes. Oh, oh pardon me. <clears throat> My dear Mrs. Farnham. Uh, <laughs> I'm Miss Peabody, the hostess. Oh. I hope you don't mind my bursting upon you like this, but I simply had to see you. Well, here I am. Well, I feel as if I were looking at a ghost. Oh, I didn't realize I looked quite that bad. Oh, no, my dear. You look enchanting. Positively enchanting. But when I think that at this very minute you might be lying beneath ten feet of snow, stiff, but stiff. I didn't realize I had such a narrow escape. Just a matter of inches, my dear. But inches. No, thank you. No, I really have no desire to go skiing with Mrs. Farnham. Well, then, just us two, old fellow. No, thank you. I'll wait till my son arrives. Ah, a son? And how old is the young man? <sighs> ten. How fortunate for the boy to have a father's companionship. Though you'd never guess it, I was brought up by a maiden aunt. Oh, is that so? And our other guest, too. That nice-looking Mr. Blake. <laughs> you really must let me introduce you to uh, him. No, no, thank you. I prefer not to. Now, uh -huh. mustn't be shy. <laughs> After all, you and he might have been buried together. <laughs> Under that avalanche. Oh, very cozy, no doubt. But the fact is, I've been buried with one man for several years, and now that I've dug my way out... Oh, uh... divorced? Yes. Of course, I'm not nearly as agile in my chosen field as I might have been had I started earlier. But it's style that counts, I always say. Take skiing, for instance. Uh, do you get winded easily? As a matter of fact, I do. Very. That's what I meant. I think I'll change my mind go skiing with you after all. That's the spirit. I have an outfit I can lend you. You must have been just a child yourself when you married. But a child. Yes, I was eight. Hmm? Or 18, somewhere along there. Oh. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'll change and get a little fresh air. You know, the smell of paint's all through this. Through I've this been place. longing for a walk myself. Oh, have you? Uh, I'll change, too, and meet you right back here. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I've heard of that. That's it. All you have to do is to let yourself go, old chap. Think of yourself, if you can, as a little bit of fluff, floating in the breeze. I thought you said you got winded easily. When I get winded, I can't talk. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, 
Come on, let's go. the word. I always tell my pupils to think of the snow as a great feather bed. Here, let me give you a hand. Finish with your dinner, darling? Yes, Mother. Well, I think I'll go down and have mine then. Here, Ellen. Why, Mother, aren't you going to wear that beautiful gold dress? And waste it on this morgue? I should say not. Well, tell you, catch mm. my cold. What of it? Someday I'll let you catch mine. Why, Mrs. Farnham, is that being a scientific mother? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Blake. Good evening. Reminds me of the first Christmas in America, before the Indians came. <coughs> yes, it, it is a catastrophe. Such a thing never occurred at my hotel at Lake Placid. Ah, oh, Mr. Blake, I have your table reserved. Well, that was thoughtful of you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Ralph. <laughs> This way, ma'am. I prefer a table on the other side, if you don't mind. Certainly, madam. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, won't you... Uh, uh, excuse me. Well, here I come. Loaded with good cheer. I'll have my dinner here, if Mrs. Farnham doesn't mind. So boring for one to eat alone, don't you think? Yes, but I think perhaps I'd better for your sake. My little daughter has a very bad cold, and I'd hate to give it to you. Oh, my dear, I never catch cold. I'm bursting with health. Germs run away from me. <laughs> but actually run away. I'm sure they do. Here. You must have one of these. Thank you. Cheerio. Oh, now look here, Snipe. Snurve is the name. Oh, don't tell me you're not going to join in. Why, this is our gala opening, Mr. Blake. Yes, it looks gala. Oh, it is the numbers that count. It's the spirit of the thing. Think of those Englishmen in far-flung places who dress for dinner every night, even though they dine alone. Well, dining alone can have its points. There's too little the carnival spirit of modern life. We need more gusto, more joy of life, more robustness. Come, have one, old chap. Yeah, you be robust. I'll watch. <laughs> oh, you're just a little self-conscious. You'll get over there. Yeah. Never mind, I'll serve it. Why, man, what do you do when you need an outlet for pent-up emotion? I have no pent-up emotion. There, you see? Come, take one of these and throw it. First thing you know, you'll be in the throes. <laughs> you know, for the first time in my life, I'm beginning to have a pent-up emotion. Give it an outlet, old fellow. Give vent to it. No, no, I think I'd need something sharper and heavier than that. Ah, to you, Mr. Blake. These serpentines are just colored bits of paper. But to me, they're a study in human nature. Oh. Uh-huh. You see, I'm a bit of a psychologist. Oh, you are? Yes. Now, now, when I see a man fling one light in the air like this, I say to myself, there's a man who tosses off his cares lightly. Now. I see him throw one tensely, like this. I say, there's a man who would like to be gay, but cannot. Now, when I see him grit his teeth and do this, I say, there's a man in the grip of savage emotions. He may have murder in his heart. <laughs> oh! Oh, dear, George, quickly. Oh, my goodness. I beg your 
beg your pardon. Don't worry, old chap. It was all in fun. You know, I think I will try one of these things. As long as we're being so gay. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I told you how she's taking it. Yes, I see. Splendid. <laughs> I told you to get your jacket. Oh, he's going to ah, join ah, the fun. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I hope I'm not too late for our walk. Huh? Oh, oh, right on the dot, dear lady. Just to get away from that germicidal female, you understand? Perfectly. I'm the lesser of two evils. You're positively psychic. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, Mr. Blake, I'm looking forward to this. It's such a beautiful morning. Yeah, are you quite sure you're dressed warmly enough? <laughs> hmm? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Almost too warm at the moment. <laughs> so, you cute things. You stole a march on us and got quitted after all. I told you, the spirit of carnival. <laughs> Shall we make the little walk a forcible old chap? <laughs> no, that would be just too jolly, old sock. But you see, as a matter of fact, Mrs. Farnham and I have, uh, have decided to brush up on our Esperanto. <laughs> I know. Esperanto, one of those languages only two can speak. Yes. <laughs> well, um, we'd better be going, Edith. <laughs> The darlings. Makes one feel romantic oneself just to watch them, doesn't it? Mind telling me what there is about me that's so screamingly funny? <laughs> no, not at all. There's a smudge on the end of your nose. Well, why didn't you say so? I thought we weren't going to converse. <laughs> <laughs> Serves me right for being so cussed. I have been rather cussed, haven't I? Yes, but you were cussed in a charming way. Mine was just, just plain cussedness. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you an apology for the way my child behaves. Oh. The poor darling's paying through the nose. She's in bed with a cold. Oh, that's a shame. I am sorry. <laughs> I have a youngster about her age, a boy. Is he, uh, with his mother? No, she died when he was born. Oh. He's coming to join me as soon as his school closes. Oh, that'll be nice. It'd be so good for Brenda to get used to masculine companionship. You see, I'm divorced. She's been alone with me too much for her own good, I'm afraid. I know just how you feel. Like Tommy and me, we, we get living in a little world all our own. Mm -hmm. My, look at that. You know, Mrs. Farm, I'm tempted to make a confession to you. I'm glad you happen to have that smudge on your nose. Don't tell me the stern Mr. Blake is flirting with me. Outrageously. Until the road clears, you might as well grin and bear it. Don't forget, my proud beauty, it's the only flirting to be had in these parts. 
Just until the road clears, huh? Well... Well, it was great while it lasted. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> I told you I went for a walk and... Alone? You know, darling, your cold is getting much better. Now, let's keep right after it. Open your mouth. But I want... Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, Wide open, wide. Ah, uh, wide open. That's it. Wide open. Ah, ah. Take the young man's luggage up to Mr. Blake's room. Uh, you could amuse yourself if your father comes back, can't you, Tommy? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, where did Mr. Blake go, do you know? Why, Mr. Blake went skating with a lady. Uh, with a lady? Then, uh, would you give this mail in to Mr. Blake? Oh, certainly. Jay. Yes, sir? Uh, and tell him Ask that... Him. Uh, Ask him. Huh? You know why. Oh, oh, yes, of course. By the way, uh, do you allow dogs in the lodge? Dogs? No, j just one dog. I'm sorry, sir. There's a very strict rule. Oh, have I? I just wondered. Yeah, uh, we just wondered. Yes. Uh, you'll explain to Mr. Blake, won't you? Something important has come up which uh, necessitates my hurrying back to town. Certainly, sir. Yes, well, uh, goodbye, Tommy. Uh, Oh, uh, I'll go out to the car and, and see you off. Oh, all right, then. That'll be lovely, yes. Too bad, Tommy. Looks as if I'll have to take the dog back with me. Well, no, you won't. Why, here's my Christmas present to Dad. Oh. And besides, he don't want to cross a dog by killed every day in the week. <laughs> Atta boy, Harold. Don't you worry. Nobody's going to send you back. Yes, but, Tommy, if they won't let you keep it... What the... We'll find a place to keep him, all right. Oh, fine. <laughs> nice dog. Gee, you mean you'll help us out? Maybe. Gosh, well, why, we can hide him in the wood cellar yeah. or something. And when Dad gets him for a Christmas present, he'll make them let him stay here. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. Well, goodbye, Tommy. Goodbye. Goodbye. You stay here a minute. I'll see you around the back later. Okay. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Tommy. You do that. What? You know what? Ouch! You stop that! Stop what? You... That's the way you made those eyes. You spit these things. I pit them. Do you still talk baby talk? Dumb Bill, that's not baby talk. That's the name of it. Pitting. And I'm the champion pitter of Los Angeles. Well, don't you pit my snow lady anymore. Go away. <laughs> Who ever heard of a snow lady? Why don't you build a snowman? Because I don't want any kind of a man around me at all, ever. I don't guess you'd be bothered much. <laughs> Not with those freckles. Huh? Oh. Ah. 
hope we get back before Tommy arrives. Well, so do I. He'll be disappointed if I'm not there. I'm so glad Brenda was able to get up today. I can hardly wait to see what happens when they meet each other. <laughs> uh, Tommy may be shy at first. Oh, of course. Brenda will be, too. But outside of this feeling about the opposite sex, she's fundamentally a sweet-natured youngster. Oh, Tommy, too. He's a little gentleman. But... Well, wouldn't you think parents would train their children not to be public nuisances? I certainly would. Oh. Hey, you children! Brenda! Mother! <laughs> you... Mother! 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 Why, Brenda! Who is that fiendish little boy? Hey, Dad! Dad! I thought you'd never come. Well, he, uh, he got here sooner than I expected. <clears throat> Tommy, what's the meaning of his behavior? Oh, I'm sure that Brenda's just as much to blame as he is. I am not here! Tommy, Tommy, that'll do, Tommy! That'll do, Tommy! That'll do, Tommy! No matter what she did. What? Remember, she's a little girl. Well, I think I must get Brenda into some dry clothes. Now, I'll have a talk with Tommy, too. We can introduce them later. Although they, they seem to have broken the ice already. <laughs> I mean... Who did start that row, son? Well, I guess I did, Dad, but, but she was a pain in the neck. All girls are. Uh, Tommy, you must get over that idea. First thing you know, we'll be a couple of roughnecks. Women, well, after all, they, they, they do make gentlemen of us. Yeah, and, and that's the trouble. Yeah. Well, if I wasn't nice to them, we don't want those two hanging around. Listen, Brenda, you've got to start learning how to get along with men sometime. It's funny you want me to start with that particular boy. He can't be very nice when he's got such a mean old father. Why, Brenda, how can you say such a thing? Mr. Blake's a charming man. And he's, well, anyway, as men go, he's... He... I guess he likes gold dresses, too. And I guess you were glad I got that coat so you could see him all the time. <laughs> Darling, what a dreadful thing to say to Mother. Well... Come here. I know a good story that I've never told you before. It's about seven men. And every last one of them was eaten up by an alligator. <laughs> I, I'm gonna like this one. <laughs> oh, darling. You're the best dancer west of the Mississippi. No, why didn't you? Edith. Um, ever wish your child was grown up? Past any danger of being hurt by what you might do? I wish it oftener than you do, probably. You see, I gave Brenda one bad deal. I have to be doubly careful. Yes, I know. Aren't you dancing tonight? Yes, I have been. It's a lovely scene. Just look at those two. <laughs> what a charming couple they make. <laughs> well, if that doesn't mean wedding bells, I miss my guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. It takes the mountains to bring out the romance in people. <laughs> Uh, how many mountains does it take? Say, is this your room? This is our suite. Hey, do you want your father to marry my mother and have a woman bossing me around? I should say not. Besides, don't think I want you for a sister, do you? Well, I certainly don't want you. Sit down. That is no worst of it. We wouldn't have them to ourselves anymore at all. Well, gosh, what do we do about it? Make them not want to get married, stupid. How? Well, my mother wouldn't make me live with anybody I hated. Is your father? Of course not. Well, then it's easy. All we got to do is to show them we don't like each other. Say, you mean fight all the time, like we did today? Well, uh, scared, huh? I am not scared. 
Only I promised my mother I wouldn't hit you again. You wouldn't hit me? Anyway, there's plenty other ways I can show them. Just what you'd expect from a girl full of hot air. Who's full of hot air? Who do you think? I think you are. You're just like all men. You're just like your old father. Say, don't you say anything about my father. It's your mother that started all this. My mother? Why, you dirty little fibber. My mother's the most... I'll hit you. Go ahead. Say, you know, uh, we shouldn't get worn out like this when they can't hear us. Now, you, you go on to your room. I, I have to go to bed. Yeah, so do I. Well, good night. I'll try and think of something by tomorrow. I'll do all the thinking around here. Oh, good morning. Good morning. morning. Do you care to have your lunch now? Oh, not just yet, thank you. Have you seen anything of our children this morning? Yeah, Mom, they had their breakfast very early. We were together? No, but they were passing notes to each other every few minutes. <laughs> just like little sweethearts. Oh. Just like little sweethearts. <laughs> there they are. Let's do it now. Okay. You get on first and, and slide down. I'll get on right after you and bump you onto the floor. What? Sure. Say, I got a better idea. You get on the other way. Isn't it swell that the children are getting like, getting like each other? I'm delighted, Steve. Yeah, that's it. Like this? Yeah, but how are you going to get on in front of me? I'll show you. Hey! 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 Oh, bless my soul. Oh, oh, bless my soul. He's here for you. Oh. Here, let me help you. Go away. Go away. Go away. You too. Yeah? Did you hurt yourself bad enough so he might take you away from here? No. Did you hear that? You hurt yourself, son? Uh, no, sir. Are you sure? Uh, yeah. You could have hurt yourself real bad. Oh, you could have hurt yourself real bad, she said to him. Why, she's just like a dear little mother. Why, why, that's a big fib. I wasn't either a dear little mother. Why, Dad, she's the one that pushed me down. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's the one who wrote you those notes at breakfast, too. I'll never forget the first time I was accused of taking a shine to a girl. <laughs> what? I tried to pretend I hated her, too. Oh, the little lamby pies. I... I'm not a lamby pie. But I'd like to lamb you. <laughs> Brenda. Go to your room and get ready for lunch. Yeah, you go along too, Tommy. Well. Well. <laughs> Look, Edith, as long as the children are getting along so beautifully, why don't the four of us have lunch together? That's a grand idea, Steve. How do you like that? I work hard to break your neck when they think we're lamby pie. Yeah. Say. You want to know who pushed you? She did. What's that to you? Who's he? Nah, uh, he's a dumb suit with a mother. Uh, Look at those pants. <laughs> <laughs> you two think you're having a lot of fun, don't you? Wouldn't you like to have some? Maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't. What could we do? Hot ears? Hot ears? Hot ears? Oh, there you are, dear. Uh, come with mother. I want you to scrub your hands thoroughly. But and put some perfume on yourself, Horace. Yes. Yeah. What's that? Nothing. Uh, come, dear. But, Mother, we were going to have some fun. Come, dear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a wash, too. Scrub's on the bathroom. Oh, no, that's my bathroom. Hey, you. Hey, kid. Hey, where are you? Hello. Oh, there you are. Come here. Here, you can take back your dollar along with your dog. Hero! Yeah, you can keep him. Here's your dollar. Here. Oh, but gee, mister, you've got to take care of him. I'm sorry, son, but he barks too much. If I got caught with him in the furnace room, I'd lose my job, sure. Oh, but gee, mister, <coughs> All that dog does all day long is yap, 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 yap. I'm through. Who is it? What's that? It's a dog. What do you think it is? Well, that's a funny kind of one. It isn't either funny. It's a genuine St. Bernard. A St. Bernard? Why, well, St. Bernard's a mammoth big dog. Well, the man said the California sun kind of withered him a little. Say, I got an idea. What? After I give him to Dad for Christmas tomorrow, I'll stick him on to you in front of everybody. 
You mean so as you'll bite? Sure. That'll show I haven't taken any shine to you. You'll do no such thing. He's not with it enough for that. Oh, Harold won't hurt you unless I tell him to. Harold's a real, real good boy. And he won't take orders from nobody else but me. Now, come on, Harold. What do you say you stand up and beg? Yeah. Sit down, Harold. Hmm. Oh, he's just tired or something. He won't do anything else, you say. Come on. He will so. He'll do anything I say. He won't either. He will so. He'll even eat the soap if I tell him to. Soap. Here, Harold. Why, Harold. Do you want some more, Harold? Hey, cut that out. Do you want to make him sick? Oh, I won't. Mother washed my mouth out with soap once. She did? Yeah, before she decided to be a scientific mother. Oh. But it didn't make me sick. I liked it. Yeah, you would. But don't you dare give any to my dog again. I'll give him some more right now if I want. Here, Harold. Here, Harold. Here, Harold. Hey, hey don't you give any more of that stuff. I will so. Here, Harold. Here, Harold. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh. 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 What in the world? Horace, did you do that? Who, I, Mother? Oh, of course not, dear. What? What happened to you, Horace? Sit down, Horace. Oh. 
something they can do here, please, maybe. What the dickens is the matter with this place? Well, sir, it's Tommy. He's pitting things. BB shot. Pitting? Tommy? Why, Brenda, that's absurd. Excuse me a minute, Edith. I can't believe it of you, but are you responsible for all this? Well, you see, Dad, just a moment. It was I, sir, not he. You? Yes, indeed. Horace! If this is true, not a single one of your Christmas presents do you get tomorrow. Not even the butterfly net. It's quite true, Mother. Oh. He didn't either do it, Dad. I did. Are you crazy? What do you want to lie like that for when, when it means you won't get your presents? Yeah, j j just think of your presents. I am. What? Dad, you saw me do it, didn't you? It was my baby shot. Tommy, I remember you were taking the blame once for another boy at school, but I can't let you go on that way forever. Oh, gee. If you did it, let's see your baby shot. I, 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 used, I used it all up. Uh-huh. Sit down. It was I, sir, who winged Miss Peabody on her beezer. Oh. And sniped that gentleman over there on his bald dough. Huh? And stung that fat lady on her way to be seated. Wh what? Yes, sir. See for yourself. Horace, go to your room at once. Yes, Mother. Oh, what a disgrace. What a humiliation. Oh. Mother, I tell you, it isn't fair. Dad, won't you please listen uh, to me? Be I quiet, can't... son. We know you're a good sport, and we know you two like each other. So there's no use your trying to make us think differently. We're getting a little tired of it. Oh, all right, Dad. Mother. May we go tell that poor little boy that we'll share our presents with him? Well? Yeah, Dad. Uh, uh, can we? Why, yes, son. Of course you can. Run along. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I... I guess we can go for our walk now, Edith. Oh, isn't it grand? Hey, Edith, I've been wanting to... Well, I mean, I've been waiting to... to get hey, hey, now. Hey! hey! I know a quiet place. No mad people, no j jolly dogs, and no children. <laughs> Sit down. Wait a minute. Hold tight. mind saying that a little louder? Is this loud enough? Yes. Yes. Listen, Tommy, I've been thinking. As long as nothing's worked out yet, what's the sense in us getting in wrong now? Tomorrow's Christmas. We can make a fresh start after we get our presents. Yeah, if we keep on like this, well, we may not get any. That'd be terrible. Flag of truce? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, don't forget, because Christmas is sacred. Come in. Come right in. This way, please. Ladies and gentlemen, our old English carol singer.
come in. Fuse in the place. Doggone it. I can't understand you children. You've been so angelic all day, helping each other, and then to... I don't know what's gotten into you. Nothing's gotten into us. Mother's gotten into Horace. Horace? Yeah, he started it. Why, Tommy? Why, you... First you take the blame for Horace, and now you want to get him into trouble. Do you take your parents for a couple of half-wits? Yes, sir. What? Confound it. Brenda! I didn't mean it that way, but gee, when we do tell the truth... That'll do. It's a good thing you're going to have a father, young lady. You need a little discipline. Yes, and a mother's refining influence won't do you any harm either, young man. You... you mean you two are going to get married? Huh, if we ever live through this disgrace, we are. But, Mother, you... Not another word. You go into your room and get into bed. And don't expect any Christmas presents in the morning. Oh! Now, that goes for you too, young man. Oh, gee, Perhaps man. you'll think twice next time before acting this way again. Of all the ungrateful, ill-mannered, impossible... No little... Christmas! Phooey! Uh, that settles it! I ain't gonna hurt her! Hey, hey, you didn't do it! Come here to me! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here! I'll kill you to talk to me that way! Don't you dare try to get away from me! Oh, I ain't there! Come here now! I ain't go! Steve! What? Brenda! Oh! How in the... Oh, I'm sorry, Brenda. Oh! That's what you get for wearing pants! You go to your room and don't let me hear another peep out of you! I'll attend to you later. Get in bed, darling. I'll come in after a while. Steve. Edith, do you want to save my life? Then give me a drink. Well, there's some brandy right there. Steve, I... I didn't think you could treat a child like that. <laughs> well, that's the first time in my life I ever spanked Tommy. You mean Brenda. Hmm? Well, even if it was Brenda, haven't I said I'm sorry? Yes. Hmm? <laughs> well, considering that I didn't mean to do it, that it wasn't much of a spanking, and that she bit me, I hope she won't hold it against me. Oh, Brenda's too nice to hold grudges. Well, of course she is. And so are you. Tell me you're not angry. That's not the point, Steve. I'm afraid you and I have made a mistake. You mean you don't love me? What I mean is that we must consider the youngsters. We were wrong about them. They really dislike each other. They'd both be miserable. I see. And it's all washed up. I'm afraid so. Don't you see, Steve? It's the only sensible thing to do. Oh, wake up, Edith. You're young and beautiful. You have a life of your own to live. I know you want to be square with the youngsters, and so do I, but that's no reason for us to consider our own lives as finished. All that's happened is that a couple of kids have acted like kids. You know, I'm beginning to believe you're right. Maybe it's because I want to believe you're right. <laughs> Give me some brandy. <laughs> uh, that's a good idea. I think I'll have a little more, too. Tonight, for the first time, I spank my own child. I mean, I spank your own child. It was good for him, too. What? Huh? Well, it was good for him. Would have been good for him. It was good for me, too. At last, I'm emancipated from being an emancipated parent. Are you drunk? Drunk? What do you mean, drunk? I mean, down deep inside of you, I think you're gloating over it. <laughs> I don't like that word, gloating. Unless it's in the gloating, oh, my darling. In the gloating, oh, my darling. Oh you are my... drunk. And I'm... I'm glad I found out how you feel about Brenda before it's too late. 
Edith, do I have to do penance all the rest of my life just because I spanked a spoiled child? No. And you don't have to see her the rest of your life either. And you don't have to see me. Edith, don't be an idiot. Sit down and listen to me. Sit down. I don't like hysterical women. Hysterical? That's what I said. You're hysterical. I suppose you'll be striking me next. I'll be what? Striking me, the way you struck Brenda oh, over there. Nonsense. Well, you did. Sure. You see this muscle? I got that beating helpless women and little children, but first I practiced on cripples. The saddest, a vicious character. Don't. No, oh, what's the use? She misjudged you. Huh? I should have known it was all that Tommy Blake's fault. That man for a father. You mean you don't like Tommy's father anymore? I never want to see him again as long as I live. Brenda, here are your slippers. Thank you. You better open your presents right away, darling. I'll leave as soon as possible. But, Mother, you're going to open the with me, aren't you? Like you always do. I'm sorry, dear, but I have all the packing to do. Tommy. Mrs. Farnham and I aren't going to get married after all. Dad! Honest? Gee, that's swell. I don't mind going now. But, but what do you say we have our Christmas first? Wait a minute. Uh, of course, sir, the Herald was my, was my biggest present to you, but I guess his wolf blood got the best of him. He's probably running with a pack again. Hey, Dad. Thanks, sir. I'll wait and open it after we get home. I guess I won't open mine till then, either. Waffle breakfast, darling. A farewell party for me. You don't look so good, Mother. And besides, tonight's New Year's Eve. Oh, I'll be home after a while. And then we'll be together the whole time on our trip. Why do we have to go? You don't like Europe. You told me so last time when we got back and, and you got sick there. Don't worry. I won't get sick this time. And I've got to get away. Someday when you're older, you'll understand. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye. Tommy, you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, thanks. And when you come back, eat your oatmeal. Hello. Hello. Hello, Tommy? This is Brenda. Well, what the heck are you calling me for? Well, you needn't think I want to talk to you. Just on account of you got to get your father over here quick and have him make up with my mother. What if he won't? My mother won't let me say his name in front of her, either. But if he doesn't stop her from going to Europe, 
I'm going to have to run away. Oh, you never would. Hey, you going loony? Oh, don't bother me no more. Morning, Dad. Morning, son. Well, gee, where is it? Where's what? Oh, gee, Dad, the tennis racket you was going to buy me, so you could teach me how to play today. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I'll get it for you the first thing tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow's New Year's, isn't it? Well, anyway, I couldn't have given you a lesson today. I've got a lot of work at the office. Gee whiz, Dad. You don't do nothing except work anymore. All the more money to buy you tennis records with. Yeah, yeah, but you're so wore out, you forget everything all the time. And then you never feel like having fun anymore. You know, sometimes I think it might have been better if you and that Mrs. Tommy. What'd I tell you? Give me a little time, son. What are you doing here? Well, I got to thinking, and well, I, I, I might run away with you if you had the nerve to. If I had the nerve? Come here. You see, I have run away. Say, you call hiding out like this running away? Well, if Mother can't find me, she'll think I'm gone, won't she? Besides, I don't want to get all tied out and hungry, maybe get lost, too. You see that thing on the wall? What's that? A cantina. A what? A cantina. It has milk and water in it. I got plenty of food, too. What kind of food? Oh, okay. Say, that isn't such a bad idea. For a girl. If that's the way you're going to be, you can get right out of here. All right, Smarty. I'll run away by myself. Goodbye. You're going to get sick, that's what. Hey. There. Why are you so anxious to run away? Well, well. Well, Dad's been acting kind of funny, too. How do you mean? Oh, he stays at the office all the time. I don't get to see him. Yeah, I know. Mother's never home either. She used to read me stories, too. Good stories? I guess that... Th that wouldn't be so bad. Once in a while. Except on Saturdays and Sundays. What do you do then? Oh, Dad used to take some of us kids to a baseball game. And he was going to teach me how to play tennis, too. Only tennis? Gee, I'd rather learn to play tennis than... than not have freckles, even. You know, I think we've made a mistake. Yeah. I guess it'd be better to divide them between us than not have them at all. Mm, besides, they might get sick. You know, people die with broken hearts, especially ladies. Yeah. It'd be pretty tough on us. Of course, I'll always hate you. But I'd do most anything for my dad. Besides, if I could go away to school soon, I wouldn't have to live with you very long. I catch colds quickly. I'll get a lot of colds so I won't have to talk to you. Say, if we run away together, That's what I thought. And Mother won't be able to go to Europe. And they'll turn to each other in their hour of need. Yeah, I believe they would. We gotta... Ow, she whiz. Say, I thought running away was, was hard on the feet. <laughs> Say, I got an idea. 
The cook's roaster's right outside. Why don't you go out and get the cushion out of the rubble seat? Come on, spoil! There it is. Well, all right. Well, how long ago was it that Tommy Blake was here? He came right after Brenda said she was going over to play with a little girl across the street. Well, get Mr. Blake on the phone and, and, and see if the children are there. Yes, uh, what's his number? Oh, I don't know. Oh, my son is missing, too. Well, put Miss Farnham on. I want to talk to her. Never mind what she told you to tell me. I'll tell her if you... Oh. Oh, hello, Edith. I'm sorry. I... How are you? Never mind how I am. Where's Brenda? That son of yours. Well, Brenda phoned him to come over there. Why, she did not. She did, too. I don't know. Have you called the police? Well, call them. Well, never mind, I'll call them myself. I'll be right over. Give me the police station. Oh, well, give me the police station. No, no, the police station. P-O-L-I-C-E, police! Calling all cars, attention all cars. Be on the lookout, either together or separately, for Brenda Farnham, nine-year-old daughter of Mrs. Edith Farnham. Come on. 1926 Molina Drive, and Tommy Blake, Ten-year-old son of Stephen Blake, 2,700 points at a place. They may have been kidnapped. Peter! You think I can sit in that house any longer? Just sit! Well, heaven knows what's happening to my baby. I'm going to the police station. All right, we'll take my car. Well, let's take this one. It has a radio in it, and we can listen to the police reports on the way. Is that your car? No, it belongs to the cook. Mine's in the... Oh, what difference does it make? I think I'd better drive. Oh, all right, all right. What's the door? Careful! This way! Well, why this way? I don't know. I just feel somehow they might have gone this way. No, the other way. Well, make up your mind or your intuition or whatever it is. I'd like to live to see Brenda again, who, as you may remember, is my child. I hope you live a hundred years. All of them were Brenda, who I'm glad to remember is your child. It's just scrapping. It don't look so good. We gotta stay down here until they get really worried and do turn to each other. Yeah, but, but, but don't poke me with that darn old skinny elbow. Move over. Maybe they've heard something. Calling car 63, car 63. Go to the corner of 6th and Arden. Pick up four men in evening clothes at a drunken party. They're breaking neighbors' windows with hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> neighbors oh, don't do that. that oh, I'm sorry, but I'm so nervous I'm sick. Really sick. Mother's got nothing on me. I'm sick, too. I need some air. Well... Be careful. It's all right. It's getting so dark. Oh, maybe they have a clue. Let's follow them. Well, step on it. Well, what do you think I'm doing? Happy New Year. Let me have that driver's license. Am I driving? Come on, come on. Let me
Hey, you. What are you doing with them two kids? What, what? kids? What? Well, for the love of... Well, how did they get in there? Go well, well, on, tell me you didn't know they were Brenda Farnham and Tommy Blake. Well, certainly. Driving they're... around the country with them. Oh. You kidnappers think you can get away with anything, these What do you think you're trying to get away with? Brenda. Jack. Why, why, we were looking for them. We're just on our way to the police station. You what? bet your life you are. Well, you dumb idiot, we're their parents. You don't tell me. Don't let them scare you, kids. All you got to do is tell the truth. Now, is that your mother? Her? My mother? No. No, but... Is he your father? Him? Huh, I should say not. But... Uh, Brenda, tell the officer who we are. Tommy, if you don't tell this man instantly... Don't let him scare you, kid. I'm her mother and she's his father. Oh. I mean, I'm Mrs. Farnham. This is my car. You no, can no, read no. of it. This is the cook's car. Oh, yes. It, you see, it's the Yeah, but I can, I can identify myself even if the kids won't. Oh, for the love of... I've left my... Keep your hands up. What? What? All right, you stay here, Jack. Call the wagon. Come on, get in the car. Come on. Go ahead, get in there. Make it snappy. Talk to Officer Murphy. Say, Kelly, tell the boys not to pick up any more of these holiday drunks. We haven't got any more cell space. Yes, sir. The cell block's beginning to look like a co-educational hotel. Hello, Murphy. Say, is Mrs. Farnham in yet? Well, when she comes home, tell her we got the kids. Yeah, kidnapped. Man and a woman. And get this. He says he's Blake and she's Mrs. Farnham. <laughs> no, we don't know who they are. We're checking up. They're in plenty of trouble now. That's what they gotta have if they're ever gonna get together. A big hour of need. All right, kids, suppose you tell me just what happened. Well, it was simply terrible, officer. Yes. Uh, where were you when they picked you up? In her garage, just talking about things. But all of a sudden, they jumped in and grabbed us and began to chloroform us. Chloroform you? Well, it wasn't exactly chloroform. We tried to scream, but they were just choking the life out of us. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll fix them. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, dear children. Happy New Year to you. A fine New Year's Eve party. Why can't you prove who we are? Well, what more can I do? Well, you're a man. You ought to know what to do. I've never been in jail. Sure, I've served life. Now, listen, this is New Year's Eve. I've already phoned five of my friends. Three of them are in Palm Springs, and the other two are also pie-eyed. Your maid's gone out with a policeman. My colored boy's evidently gone back to Africa. After living in this city for 35 years, I can't be identified until they find my picture in the Rose Gallery. Well, they found it? No, not yet. Seems you look pretty much like Rosie the Dope. They're trying to check fingerprints. Fingerprints? As for me, I expect to end my days in prison for murder. I'll kill Brenda quickly, but Tommy's going to die a lingering death. What in heaven's name got into them? Seriously, Steve, why do you suppose they're doing this? I haven't the faintest idea. Seems they wouldn't stop at anything to keep us apart. You know, I think they deliberately conspired to break us up. To make us hate each other. Well, if they did, I guess they've succeeded. I'm just... The unfortunate there is. Oh, shut up! Uh, now, I'll get us out of here. Hey, officer. Officer, oh, Captain! Hey, Captain! Hey, Captain! 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 Oh, what do you want? Are those two little lunatics still sticking to that kidnapping story? And how? Well, get them in here, and I'll get the truth out of them. Oh, yeah? Yes. Hey, here's your hat. Thanks. You better listen to me. And you better hurry up, because when the truth does come out, you're going to look pretty silly. I'm going to look silly, yes. huh? Yes. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> Gee, are they in cells? Yep, right over there. Yes, we're in cells. How do you like it, Brenda? Gee. How do you like seeing Mother in jail? Well, it's your own fault. Yes, if you had only did what we wanted you to do. What? What did you want us to do? 
We... Happy New Year! Oh, shut up! Oh, what are you high having me for? Because you got a bigger cell than mine? Why, Steve! Hi, Steve! Wait a minute. Do you know this man? Certainly I know him. But because he has a bigger cell than mine, he doesn't want to know me. Why, it's uh, Phillips, isn't it? John Phillips! Why, I didn't recognize you. Uh, what are you doing here? I'm trying to say Happy New Year to you. That's what. And if I had a bigger cell than you, I'd say Happy New Year to you, Steve. Steve what? Uh, What's his last name? Steve Blake. Everybody knows Steve Blake. Happy New Year, Steve. Happy New Year, Tom. <laughs> well, now, will you let us out? Right. Yes, ma'am. Well, what are you waiting for? Let him out. <laughs> you little rascals. What do you mean by wasting the time of this whole police station? You know what I could do to you for this? Captain, what's the penalty for lying, criminal perjury, and wanton defamation of character? Twenty years at hard labor. Huh? Add to that the charges of mayhem, arson, malfeasance in office, and even, even misdemeanor. Thirty years more. On bread and water. For criminals as desperate as these, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Gee, we Oh, didn't... no, don't call me Dad. You disown me. Lock him up, Captain. Yes. Oh, but don't take Brenda. She didn't do anything. It was all my fault. It was not. It was not. We both did it. If you take Tommy, you got to take me, too. Oh, she's just lying. If Tommy goes to jail, I go, too. Now, wait a minute. Am I to understand that you like Tommy? No, now, wait. Don't say anything you don't mean. You mean that you two really like each other? Yes. Sure. Well, then, will you please explain what you and Tommy have been up to? We were just trying to help, Dad. We wanted to bring you together again. You wanted you to wanted what? You wanted to what? Well, at first we didn't, but... But, but we changed our minds. Shall I take him away now? Oh, gee, Dad, can't you do something? Can't you, Mother? Well, uh, are you willing to serve a life sentence for Brenda? If you'll serve one for Tommy. Oh, boy. These parents certainly are a lot of trouble. Yes, but they're worth it. Come on.